Hi! In this video, we're going to learn how to include loops in our Arduino programs. Let's go! As a refresher, a loop is a control structure that allows us to repeat a set of commands. They are helpful because they shorten our code and make it easier to alter our programs. There are two different types of loops that we use in different situations. We use a for loop when we know the amount of times we want to repeat commands. For example, we could repeat commands three times. We use a while loop when we want to repeat commands until a certain condition is reached. For example, we could repeat commands until a button is pressed. To write a for loop, we use this syntax. Let's explain this a bit. First, we need to start with the keyword for written in lowercase letters. Inside the parentheses, we need to create a loop variable to track our progress. We do this by declaring the variable i as an int. We can see that variable here. Usually we use i as the variable name here, but anything can be used. In this case, we are setting our variable to start at zero, but a different number can be used here too. For example, if we wanted values to count down from 10 to zero, we could set the initial value of the variable to start at 10. After a semicolon, we write the condition for the for loop. In this case, we want the loop to continue while the value of i is less than 10. An important note here is that the value we put here will not actually be included in the loop because we are only continuing the loop while the values are less than 10. This means that the last time through the loop in this case is when i equals 9. Lastly, after another semicolon, we write how we want the value of i to be altered on each iteration. Here we are adding 1 to the value of i each time, but we could write i plus equals 2 to count by 2s, or i minus minus to subtract 1 on each iteration. Indented inside a set of curly braces, we write all the commands we want to repeat. Let's take a look at an example to make sure we understand. If we have this for loop, our variable i is starting at 0, continuing while i is less than 250, and adding 50 to the value each iteration. Every time the loop runs, the brightness of the red LED is increased. On the first run, i has a value of 0, so the LED is off. i then increases by 50, so it has a value of 50, which is still less than 250, so the code runs and LED is set to a brightness of 50. 50 is added to i again, so it becomes 100. The LED is now set to a brightness of 100. Another 50 is added to i, so it becomes 150, which is still less than 250, so the program runs and the LED is set to a brightness of 150. 50 is again added to i, so it becomes 200. The LED is now set to a brightness of 200. Another 50 is added to i, so it becomes 250, which is not less than 250, so the loop ends. Let's take a look at this in our Tinkercad simulator. Here we have our pulsing LED program that we wrote in the last lesson. This program works great, increasing the brightness of our LED by 50 every quarter second until it reaches full brightness, and then decreasing the brightness by 50 until it reaches zero. The only thing is that we are repeating a lot of the same commands over and over again, which is making our program really long. This is exactly the perfect time to implement a for loop. We can see that lines 11 to 27 are repeating by increasing the brightness variable by 50 and then setting the LED to that brightness. Let's instead use a loop that we just wrote in place of these commands. So we can write for int i equals 0, i is less than 250, i plus equals 50, and we want to write to our red LED, the value of i. Then we want to wait a quarter of a second, and we close our curly brace. Let's see how that works. Awesome! Now we can also use a loop to control the rest of our code. All we are doing is now decreasing the brightness by 50 every quarter second until it reaches zero. So let's implement that loop also. We can write for int i equals 250, i is greater than zero, i minus equals 50. 
and inside our curly braces, we just want to set red to that value of i and wait a quarter second. Let's see it all together. Perfect. Now one other thing we can do to make our program even more readable is rename the variable i. Though it works just fine as is, we could instead use brightness so that it is clear what the variable is controlling. Let's change all the locations of i in our code to use brightness. And instead of assigning it up here, we don't need that line anymore because we are um, introducing that variable inside our for loops. Let's see how it looks. Perfect. The syntax for a while loop is a bit less complicated. Let's take a look at the different parts. The first thing we have is the keyword while. Inside parentheses, we write the condition. The while loop will keep running until the condition here becomes false. Indented inside curly braces, we write all the commands to be repeated while our condition is true. Let's look at an example. Here, we are assigning a variable inside our loop function that is saving the current value of the potentiometer. The loop runs the command to turn on the LED as long as the value of the potentiometer stays above 500. Note that we need to be checking the value of the potentiometer both inside and outside of our while loop. When we run this program, we see that our LED turns on and stays on when the value is greater than 500 and turns off when the value dips below the threshold. During your next exploration, you'll be using a new component, a servo motor. This motor uses a feedback system to control position. Many servo motors can be set to positions from 0 to 180. You'll explore more about this functionality in the next exercise, but it is important to note that the wires on a servo motor are color-coded, either using brown, red, and orange wires, or black, red, and white wires. The brown or black wire is always connected to ground, the red wire is connected to power, and the orange or white wire is connected to an Arduino pin. In Tinkercad, you can see a bit of the wire colors near the connector, but if you hover over each port, it will tell you what it should be connected to. In this lesson, we learned how to use for and while loops in our programs. Now it's your turn to explore loops in your own Arduino programs.